the top of the hour, we're sticking with cricket on the Sportsmax Zone. A 40-run loss to South Africa on Saturday meant a second consecutive Test Series defeat for the West Indies. The 3-0 flogging away to England and 1-0 defeat to the Proteas have effectively rendered January's historic 1-0 draw against Australia a distant memory. Now, as is customary, the results have caused much discussion across the region, especially relating to the makeup of the team. And so there are many questions. Is Craig Brathwaite the right man for the captain's job? If not Brathwaite, then who would lead the team? Does a right-hander need to shelve the leadership role to focus on his batting? What of Jason Holder in that number six batting position? The simple question is, where do we go from here? Um, we're going to have a lot of conversations about this issue in, in the coming weeks. Um, one of the issues, Mariah and Ricardo, is that the West Indies plays too little test cricket. And we've heard the coach, Andre Coley, and captain Craig Brathwaite mention that as well. So if it's a case of addressing these issues, it's not as if we have, a, have regular test matches so we can tackle the problem head on. Yeah, and I think answering a question like this will always come back to that. Because the thing is, the players can always fall back on that response, as in, we don't get to play enough. But still, I tend to feel like that is not a good enough excuse. I mean, yes, we wish that things could be differently and that they can get the opportunity to play more test cricket against top-class nations, top-class cricketers, and get that work in. But it still begs the question as to, you know, when will we, um, when we get the opportunity to play against teams, just focus on the teams in front of us and beat them. Because I watched a couple of series and um, the openers have continued to fail. So your job is to open the bat and get runs on your bat. Despite the opposition, despite the amount of um, cricket that you've played, you practice with these things, right, Ricardo? We, we see them continuously failing. That, for me, doesn't sit well with me because I always believe that um, the opening of any inning sets the foundation for the others, other batters to come, does not put as much pressure on them. And again, I understand we're all humans, and from time to time, these openers will fail. But when it becomes a continuous problem, I think that, you know, it, I would say it starts from there, from the top. Yeah, so there is one massive problem that I think is clear for everybody to see, the batting isn't good enough. This is the first time, and I think I've said it before on this show, in the history of West Indies cricket, that they do not have a world-class batsman. And definitely it does not exist in the test team. There's no other point in the history of West Indies cricket where the team does not have a superstar batsman, at least one. There have been times when the West Indies have had multiple superstar batsmen. So that in and of itself is a serious problem. You look at the current squad. Just take a look at the World Test Championship period, 2023 to 2025. There are no West Indian batsmen in the top 20 run scorers in that period. The best is Alec Athanes with 421 runs, and he's averaging 24. Yeah. Then Kavim Haju made his debut this year at 418 runs. He's also averaging under 30. Craig Brathwaite, the captain, is averaging just about 21 in that period. So you look at those numbers, and it is very clear to see that the big issue here is the batting. No, what is more difficult than identifying what the problem is, is identifying how we fix that problem. For me, the bowling is much better than the batting at this stage. Take a look, for example, the West Indies have two bowlers in the top 20, Jaden Seals, Shamar Joseph. Um, Jaden Seals just returning to the test game. Shamar Joseph no, only starting. making his debut in, in, in January um, this year but against Kimar Australia. Was in the top 20 up to recently, wasn't he? Yeah, Kimar, Kimar, well, not talking the overall rankings now, just okay. talking um, in the, terms of wickets and the averages for, for the, the World, World Test Championship, Championship period, okay. which is 2023 yeah, Roach is to 2025. 20 yes, yeah. he is. Yes. And then you have someone like Alzara Joseph, in only this period alone is just outside the top 20. So there is a lot of quality in the bowling. Now, I listened to Ian Bishop during the England series speak about Jaden Seals and how the period he had in England playing um, county cricket might have helped him. Um, and Bish said that, listen, it is clear that Jaden Seals had a lot of quality and talent before. Um, and I, I hope I'm not getting him wrong, but it appeared to me as if he was suggesting 
that he would still be doing the things he is doing now without um, that stint. The yeah. sorry experience. The sorry experience. Okay. Um, I hope I didn't get him wrong, but that's kind of what I gleaned from what he was saying. Yeah. What I do want to say, though, again, if you look at the history of West Indies cricket and when we have done our best in any format, when we dominated Test cricket, a lot of our best cricketers from across the Caribbean were playing county cricket in England. That's a fact. When we dominated T20 cricket, a lot of our best talent were playing in India. Yeah. Um, and, and the experience, the professionalism, the training that they gather in, in those first-class arenas have no doubt or no doubt assisted them to become world beaters. Now we have a situation where we have cricketers who are barely playing regional cricket before they get into the West Indies setup. Um, they are not playing much cricket outside of that, whether counter cricket in England or any other high level league. And so then what do you expect yeah. when they are coming up against the best in the world who have played um, hundreds of first class matches at a really high level before they come into the test arena? And then our players have to be going up against that. And I've said this before as well. I think last time I was speaking more specifically to the women about the lack of quality in the batting department. And I said the most difficult skill to learn in cricket is batting. You can learn to bowl and bowl well, in my estimation, in a significantly shorter period of time, as well as field well in a significantly shorter period of time than you can when it comes to batting. For me, batting is a special skill, and right now we're mm. struggling. And to be honest with you guys, mm. I don't know when this is going to get mm. better on either the men's or the women's side. Yeah. Well, pretty solid points there made by Ricardo. Nikhil Utam Chandani, one of the commentators in the South Africa series that ended last weekend, joining now on the discussion. Uh, Nikhil, welcome to the Sportsman Zone. Always great to have you uh, discuss cricket on our show. Uh, let's start with what we began with and the issue of uh, the captain's role that Craig Braffitt right throughout the region. There are questions now coming from um, all over uh, about Craig Brathwaite's captaincy and uh, the fact that uh, the team isn't, isn't flourishing at the moment. And uh, would it be something in your mind that uh, would make sense for them to relieve him of the captaincy and have him focus on his batting? Yeah, Lance, I think um, it's a tough one. I don't, I think as, as equally as I hear that point, and I can understand how much it's impacted his performances. You look at this year alone in that cycle that you guys were just showing and talking about. For Craig Brathwaite to average under 20, who's been the West Indies for a decade now, he's been our leading go-to in test cricket. It obviously is impacting the team um, detrimentally. But when I do look at the other candidates in the team, I think this is a very young West Indies side. And also, I, I, you have to ask if anyone will be even interested in taking the role. With the amount of white ball cricket that's coming with the advent of where I think our players in that top order especially are heading. I don't know if we have any other candidates who will be as committed as well, to Red Bull cricket as a, someone like a Craig Brathwa is. So I think as much as you want to question if he's fit enough for the role, um, I think you also have to weigh up the other candidates as well. I, I, in terms of his performance, I don't think Craig Brathwa is someone who will, will shy away. I, I expect him to come back. There have been a few times in his now 10-year career where he was very close to being dropped, and it seemed like then we got the best out of Craig Rathit. Um, Again, I was really shocked that he didn't get at least one score in that South Africa series. There were opportunities where he got starts. I think back to the first test, he was on 35, then got run out. Second innings, obviously, he was going for the runs. But I am surprised that even in the second test where they were chasing the runs, he looked really confident before lunch, hit a few boundaries. That, to me, looked like the Craig Rathit of old. But credit to Rabada, credit to South Africa. They bowled well to him. They exploited his weaknesses. But for me, I think I would keep Craig Brathwaite as captain. I don't see any other candidates that I feel comfortable enough that can take over. Yeah, and, and to, to kind of side with what you're saying, I've never been one, um, Nikhil, to be supporting the removing of captains for West Indies in the past couple of decades because it is my opinion that captaincy has never been our biggest problem. And Ricardo just outlined, outlined that the batting really has been a problem. Um, for Craig Brathwaite, it's problematic because he's uh, the leader of the batting department and he's not showing good form at the moment. But outside of not identifying a different captain, do you think Craig would bat better if he didn't have the burden of captaincy? 
Not necessarily on the lines, because when I speak to Craig about captaincy, about his leadership, I actually think it helps him stay switched on. He always tells me how much he's thinking when they're in the field, for example, on how you praise out batters and, and the usual things that captains would think about. But I actually think it keeps him engaged in the game. And, I mean, yes, it's a pressure, but when he took the team to Bangladesh, for example, and played a critical part in them winning that series, or he's had moments where 2022, for example, the England series that we won, he also was critical then. So, yes, I understand it's convenient now that he's not scoring runs and he's captain. So that's the first argument that people can get to. But let's also look at the times where he's actually done well. He's actually scored runs and has been captain. And he scored some critical runs for the West Indies under pressure. Um, the Leeds test match, which they won, he scored 100. So in that Bangladesh game where, where Mears made the runs, he also got runs there. So it's not like he's had a track record of failing under pressure. He's been in pressure situations and he's been able to, to deliver and score runs for the West Indies. So, yes, he's having a lean patch of run scoring, but I don't think there's a necessary correlation with his captaincy per se. Yeah, Nikhil, there's no doubt that the batting unit has been below par. How poor have they been? Yeah, uh, Ricardo, it's been very disappointing. I'm going to start by saying the 263 in Guyana. Uh, we were, I was there. You guys watched it on TV. I think usually we can always say, you know, pitches in the Caribbean, it's always hard to chase. The West Indies had every chance to score those 263 runs. The pitch was good. Uh, they did well. The bowlers did well to get them back in the game after I felt South Africa had taken the advantage. And, I mean, you just have to look at the low order. The fact that the last five batters, Warwick and Moti, Joshua De Silva, could put on 122 runs and the top six could only put on 90. I think therein lies our biggest issue and it's consistency with that top order. Um, there are many different ways. I know the entire world is saying it's a problem. What I'm thinking about Ricardo and team is how do we actually improve this problem? And I think it comes down to a few different factors. One of them is the way that we score. You look at the West Indies. I actually have done some digging in the past couple of years before this cycle even started. The West Indies have been the lowest scoring team in test cricket. And I think cricket continues to evolve. You watch England, you don't have to be basketball per se, but there's a lot more run scoring going on in the test game now. And I think the West Indies have not yet evolved to that level. In the last two years, in the top eight nations alone, we have been the lowest scoring team, I think less than three runs and over in test cricket. Um, and I, to me, I think that's not good enough. And the biggest example was in Trinidad, where it was the flattest surface that we've had in a long time in the Caribbean. And we still were only able to go up two and a half runs per over. And the amazing thing about it was that it was just a simple mindset shift in the second innings where they said, we're going to go after the runs. And I, yeah, that's the graphic there. So you can see how poor we've been. Um, and that is in the West Indies now. So this is even going past the first point I was making. This is when teams are coming to the Caribbean. These teams have come here and even in our own home conditions, they continue to score at a faster rate. So that to me is a big concern. But what was glaring to me is in that first test, when Craig Brathwaite said we're going to go after the runs, all of a sudden the West Indies batting lineup looked like a different team. They got to the first 100 runs in almost half the time that they did in the first inning. So when I'm looking at those points, I think we have to put a bigger emphasis on run scoring and being a lot more positive at the crease. And I do think there's a responsibility for us as cricket fans around the region to support them. The coach has given them their backing to want to be more expressive and be positive. But as a Caribbean people and West Indian fan, we cannot then criticize that Alec Athenes when he gets dismissed sweeping. Because when he, when he made the 92 in Trinidad, he played the sweep shot and he got some criticism. But what I wanted to know is, had he played that 40 runs early and gotten out, what would people say then? But we have to realize this is someone who has identified this as a run scoring option and he's taking that option. So can we as a Caribbean people back him? Um, and, and try to get him to execute that better as opposed to going the defensive route, which I don't think is, is frankly working. Yeah, I think you make a brilliant point, Nikhil. And I tell you why. I remember a few years ago, even before I came onto the show, I had conversations um, with the team. And it was around the time when John Campbell was coming into the West Indies setup. And I had suggested at the time that I liked the selection of John Campbell because I think an aggressive player was needed at the top of the West Indies order that would be willing to take on opening borders because I felt that was missing and that the West Indies were always starting innings on the back foot where the bowlers were getting on top. Um, of course, it didn't work out the way I hoped it would have with John Campbell, but I, I think it's a similar situation um, that you are speaking about in terms of the player 
players being more aggressive, being more expressive. We saw some of it in England as well, where the team started out um, rather defensive-minded. And I think by the second or, or third test, you saw more players being more willing um, to express themselves. And I've always struggled with this, Nikhil, that as a Caribbean region, where the, our strength is T20 cricket, which is scoring quickly, that our test team is the exact opposite. But the thing is, Ricardo, there are people in the Caribbean and people in influential positions who believe the personnel in the test team doesn't actually have the ability to play that more aggressive cricket. And you can look at the second test and you can say, well, Casey Cardi got up playing an aggressive shot. Anthony has got up sweeping. So I do think that, look, we are not at the point yet where we can go all out attack like in England. And I think that there's a responsibility on the players as well. If we are saying we want to play this way, then Athenaeus and Carty must go back to the drawing board and have that experience of being more aggressive. I thought in that situation, exactly. Um, the 263, for example, that we were chasing. Yes, you understand that Athenaeus had swept his way to 92 in the first test, but he played three sweeps against a different bowler in an off spinner now, so the ball is going away from him. And three sweeps before that one, he hadn't hit one of them. So can he find the experience, the maturity enough to say, well, look, it's not working for me today. Let me try another option. Casey Carty knew that everyone was bowling wide to him because that's his scoring area. He got out, um, hitting the point. It was a no ball. He got given a reprieve and still he was dismissed with that wide plan. So the ex inexperience showed. And I think there has to be, as much as we want to be aggressive, there needs to be a situational awareness. But again, as, as you guys said at the beginning of the show, that will only come with more time in the saddle. And unfortunately, we don't play enough test cricket to actually learn out in the middle. So will these players who will now go to focus on so much white ball cricket have enough time and, first of all, put in the responsibility to actually work on the game for when Bangladesh comes around in November? Yeah. Do you get the impression sometimes watching the West Indies test team and, and specifically the batting that there is uncertainty as to how they want to play? Yeah, I, I think we have to say that because you, you just have to contrast the way the two games, for example. I thought when they played in Trinidad and they were 113 for one, I didn't really get the feeling that they thought they were dominating the game because they were batting so slowly. So then it almost seemed like in the second test, there was an effort to try to be a bit more aggressive. And just speaking to Andre Coley, and he's very, he's, he's voiced it many times in the media. He wants the guys to be more positive. He has got their backing. He understands that there will be risks that need to be taken. But it's just, I think, a matter of the players having enough courage to think, let's actually implement that. And I mean, look, they tried in that 263, and we fell short. So some guys will say, well, the region is criticizing us for being aggressive. So I think there are many different ways you can look at it. We just have to become better. If that's the way we want to play, then I think we have to work on our skills in terms of being aggressive and positive. Yeah, and just one quick thing, because the Jason Holder dismissal, I know, has been heavily criticized um, from that second test. And I know many will look at the timing. But again, it's the sort of shot that Jason Holder would hit out of the park seven out of ten times. And if he believes he has the ability to do it, and we know he has the ability to do it, he has to back himself to do it. Now, on the rare occasion when it doesn't come off, we have to say, well, tough luck to you, Jason, but we back you to play that way. So I completely understand your point on that one, um, Nikhil, and I think Lance does as well. Mm. Yeah, and Ricardo, my question to you guys, sorry, quickly, Lance, I would ask you guys, are you okay if we go through this experimentation and continue to lose test matches? Is that an okay approach if we're going to be aggressive but we lose? Mm. It would be okay for me, and I tell you why, because then I would see that there is a plan. Um, and a clear plan. Now, if there's a clear plan and it ends up not working out, then we can reassess or we can dial back a little bit if we feel, okay, we're going too hard. Um, then also you can probably learn, okay, in different periods of the game, let's treat them differently. Let's go hard um, if we back first in that first session. If that doesn't work out, then this is how we approach the rest of it or whatever the case might be. But there needs to be a clear plan that every single member of the team understands what the individual roles are and how they are going to approach it. Yeah, and one more thing before you go, Nikhil. Post-match, the um, commentary panel, including Ian Bishop, had a chat with the coach, Andre Coley. And uh, the question was put to Coley about inserting some of the, the white ball players into the red ball setup. No names were called, but I, I would suspect that people like 
Brandon King and uh, Shea Hope would have been a couple of names. Uh, Coley did suggest that he has spoken to some of these players. Again, no names were called. But is that a route that you think the team should go? Well, the thing is, Lance, he said in that same piece that you're speaking of, he said he wants to get a group of 18 to 20 players and have them to be available at different times. My only challenge with that is, where do you get the continuity? So let's say a Ralston Chase is available for one series in November, but then in January he goes to play the ILT20. How do you build like a, a sort of formula as a team when you're chopping and changing so much? But again, I don't know what the alternative is because surely Ale Athenes has the ability we've seen him. Surely he's going to get white ball opportunities. Jaden Seals did well in Lanka Premier League two years ago. I'm sure he will get um, some opportunities. Shamar Joseph has already gone to ILT20 and, and in the cards for Big Bash, etc. So it's a tough job. But the way he's seeing it is that if he can have a nucleus of players who he can go to at any given time, then maybe that's the way forward. And I, I think I have to go with, with what the coach says. He's more qualified than me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nikhil, thanks for talking to us. I know this discussion will continue because West Indies cricket is always on the lips of sports fans right throughout the region. Thanks for chatting with us. Yeah, thanks. I just want to say, Lance, it's not, I'm not saying that's the solution. I don't know. Yes. But I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way we can improve because right now it isn't working. And that 263, it was a... It was a dagger to my heart, man. I really thought we could have won that one. Yeah, I, 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 I could have heard it in your voice. <laughs> Were you upset about the umpire's calls? Uh, no, I was not, Ricardo. I think uh, that's cricket. <laughs> You're wicked, you know. <laughs> All right, we, we, we leave it there. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.